All right, here we are with another edition of So You Got a Malinois, the video segment that answers all your questions about working dogs. Um, could be anything, could be a Dutchie, could be a Roddy, could be a, could be a giant schnauzer, who knows? Um, some people even write in and want to ask about uh, Border Collies. Good working dog. Um, all right, here's a question. First one goes out to Jimmy D. Hi, love the content, very helpful. I have a six and a half month old working lion German Shepherd. He's obedient, responds well to training, and is developing perfectly, but he just will not settle out of his crate. No matter how much physical or mental stimulation he's had, if he's out of the crate, he wants to move around, becomes mischievous, meaning we can't even watch TV or sit on the sofa with the dog around, so we have to crate him when we're at home. He spends a fair amount of time out of the crate as he comes to work with me on daily walks, errands, etc. advice. So, um, here's a dog that maybe, first of all, he's six and a half months old, so I'm not gonna really jump on you as much yet because you still have a lot of time with him, and he's six and a half months old, so he's, he's kind of like in that, that uh, youth phase where, the, where he's gonna wanna play, he wants to do something. So if he's out, you're gonna probably need to do something with him. But I, this whole idea of how much physical or mental stimulation he's had, that is not the game with him. And that's something you know, you're gonna see on TV with, with trainers telling you, tire the dog out, a tired dog is a good dog. A tired dog is not a good dog. A tired dog is a dog that's just tired and he's, not, he's just being good because he's tired. So you wanna change the behavior and get the dog to understand what you expect of him. And early on, when he's wound up, get him out, train him, play with him, engage him, and then give him obedience. Like tell him to lie down and chill while he's, li while he's um, in training. That should be part of the training. You should be able to tell him, lie down, stay there, and then go do something, and then come back and release him. Um, your play with the dog also should involve as much excitement as calm time. So sometimes I'll drive, bring the dog's drives up, and then I'll bring the dog's drives down through a down, a sit, a stay, a wait, and then a release. So he starts to learn that I'm gonna channel his drive because I'm in charge. I'm easily able to channel the dog's drive to get him to understand what I want him to do and what I don't want him to do. And if you can't do that with the dog, the dog's gonna have a really hard time understanding what you're expecting of him. And it's probably gonna do some stupid stuff like acting out and stuff like that. So first of all, be real patient with the dog. He's really young, six and a half months old, and he's a working line dog. So I don't know what you're doing with the dog, but if you're not doing a sport like like IPO or something like that, then you've got a dog that, you know, you got a Ferrari to go grocery shopping with, and I don't know why you would do that. So um, I hope that helps you, I hope it gives you some input. Cindy Vanderbeck says, hi Robert, I have a working line female going to be seven months old on the 21st, happy birthday. I think, oh, that was, oh, sorry, I just missed it, right? She knows when I open the door, she sits and she'll wait until I give her the release of yes command to go out. My problem is when I want to leave by myself, I can't get out the door. I've tried to put her in a down or a place and it doesn't last. She's usually, she doesn't really have a strong foundation in either one. Um, so I, I don't understand. I mean, first of all, one thing I really want to be clear on is if you're doing obedience with a dog, like you tell the dog sit and stay and you open the door and then you release them, you cannot use that same thing um, with the dog when you're going out. That would be highly, highly unfair because the dog would be sitting and waiting and you wouldn't come back for, you know, for a long time. And that's really gonna teach the dog bad obedience because the dog's gonna start to break on their own when, when you're not in sight. And in certain things, like in, in um, I know in, in um, IPO and in AKC, you have to do an out of sight stay. That means the dog has to stay somewhere without seeing you. And that's something the dog has to trust that you're gonna come back and will hold that position. So. If you're going out, I'll tell you what I do with Goofy and Maya is I just take a Kong, I stuff it with some um, almond butter or with some yogurt or something like that, and then I, I give that to them when I go out so that they see that when I leave, always great things happen. So that's gonna be a whole different way to look at this. Um, don't tell the dog, sit down and then try to get out the door. Give the dog something to look forward to when you go out, that it should be a good time for them, that they should also be able to enjoy it. Uh, put a TV on if they're watching TV, if, if they're into watching TV. I don't know, my dogs don't watch TV. I, I don't watch much TV. but. Um, leaving them a Kong, leaving her a Kong and stuff like that is going to be a lot better idea than what, than what you've been doing. I hope that helps. Matthew Joseph Gomes, and I think it's Gomes because if you're, you're probably Portuguese, I have a, I've recently bought a Belgian Malinois and I'm highly interested in training her. She has 14 weeks and has no formal socialization or training. She's bringing 
to be a difficult, I guess she's beginning to be a difficult dog to bond with, not very trusting and highly timid and fearful. So some Malinois, I've seen them from some breeders, they're really nervy dogs and it's a big, big, big problem. So um, I'm gonna tell you that you might wanna work with a trainer on this. And I would really work with a balanced trainer if you have a Malinois, not a positive only trainer, because this dog with positive only training and only clicker type and uh, reward based training is gonna get a little nutty. So. As much as I like positive training, there has to be a balance and Malwa has to understand that. Now, the dog is 14 weeks old, so I'm going to be really clear. There shouldn't be harsh corrections on the dog at 14 weeks, but I want you to get the dog set up to understand that there are going to be corrections involved in the dog's life. Um, that's why I'm asking you to work with a balanced trainer, depending on where you are. You can, um, you can check out different areas. And again, a really good basis is going to be to get a good IPO club or a, a, a ring sport club because they're going to, they've worked with this breed before. Um, if she's not trusting and highly timid and fearful, go slow with other people around her. But um, hand feeding in public places, uh, getting her desensitized to that through a lot of treats and stuff like that when you're out. But make sure there's also you know, the, a really good amount of structure that you're asking her for things and, and, uh, and rewarding for those things. So um, a good trainer would probably help you out because I think the dog might be a little nervy and I've seen Malinois like that before. Some of them don't flush out, but uh, and when I say flush out, I mean, I don't mean like flush out, flush out. I mean, they just don't end up being good working dogs, but they're still wonderful pets. Um, but, but socialization and getting a really good balanced trainer on this dog is really gonna help you a lot and do a lot for you. So um, next one goes out to Ashutosh Pandey, oh, I, said, I hope I said that right. Love your videos, thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge with all of us. My question, while playing with my four month old German Shepherd, he gets too excited and does not obey me. Puppy question, I might start a whole new section just on puppy questions, which is not a bad idea. But a four month old um, puppy is not gonna be able to obey you because he doesn't have any experience on obeying you. The dog is still learning, you're still shaping and luring behavior, you're trying to get the dog to do things. Start, first of all, don't play with the dog and expect him to obey you. Do calm interaction engagement training and then teach the dog how to obey you. That's a big, big, big difference over just you know, getting a dog all wound up and running around and then asking him to sit or down or come or whatever. All those obedience commands have to be taught in a calm, matter first you know un under maybe luring with food and, and and stuff like that and then we put them into the playing phase which we then call the distraction phase so we like i'll uh, tell my dog you know i'll throw something and i'll run after it and i'll tell him no come here and i'm going to do a video on all that i'm going to show you how, how i do that with my dog um, but those are distraction phase things so if the dog is in play mode or play you know high play mode which is prey drive then the dog does not really have the, the, the skills to obey you yet because you haven't let, laid that foundation. So you gotta lay the foundation and then you can do that. And I hope that makes sense to you. Um, Me Raj says, I have a Malinois, Malinois, I spell, you spelled it wrong, it's kind of funny, Malinois, because um, they do make a lot of noise. A Malinois, and the problem is I have, when anyone enter my property, he doesn't bark and he isn't aggressive at all, please help me fix this behavior. This is a crazy question, uh, me, May, whatever your name is, um, Raj, I think I'm going to call you Raj. Um, if your dog's not aggressive when people come over, you've got a really nice dog. If you want to fix this behavior, maybe you need to buy a gun or something so you can protect your property, but don't expect your dog to do it um, because he's being a nice dog, right? If the dog is pressured, if somebody, put, if somebody comes to hurt you or hurt them, I'm sure the dog is going to bite or protect you. But the dog shouldn't just be barking willy-nilly when people come on there. That's a problem dog that, that you're going to have. If you're going to have a dog like that, you're going to have a disaster on your hands. And it's going to be one of my questions is always, hey, my dog is too assertive or too aggressive when people come over. So there's this mixed bag. Your dog being friendly to people when they come over is a good thing. You don't want a willy-nilly dog biting because you're going to have a lawsuit and then you're going to end up putting the dog down. So the idea that this dog is friendly is good if you want the dog to be a protection dog. Join a protection dog sport uh, club, an IPO club, a Mondio club, a French ring club, a, you know, a, a KNPV club, any, any club that does protection dog training so that the dog learns. But the fact that he's being friendly when people come over will make him an easier dog to train for protection sports because he doesn't have any really bad habits. So um, be happy on that one, Raj. Come on, for real. Okay, uh, Jim B. Shevlin says, I have been attempting to socialize my five-month-old male Belgian Malinois puppy at places like Home Depot, Lowe's. This is not a plug for them, by the way. I'm not getting paid for that endorsement. And a few other stores that allow animals. While at these stores, I walk him on a long leash that I roll up about four feet for safety reasons. As I walk, um, people pet and interact with him. What I have been doing is provide treats, ask them to get to his level, move slow, not to jerk your hand away. 
if he growls or barks, is this correct or should I be approaching it a different way? Can this be mentioned in your next video? Jim, yeah, Jim, I think you're doing the exact right thing. I mean, I think it's absolutely perfect. Um, and, and having the people get down to the dog's level is going to make them super comfortable. Um, people being calm. I mean, I would always ask people, hey, would you mind helping me train my dog? Are you familiar with dogs? Are you good with dogs? Are you afraid of dogs? Because puppies tend to bite and five months old Malinois are still going to, they're going to still be there in a teething phase. So um, you're going to have to deal with that. But, but that's excellent. You know, you're going to the right places. You're, um, you're, you're getting the dog in. You're not doing a fake service dog thing, which I think is great. That usually pisses me off when people do that. But um, remember also what the one thing I would add to this, which I think will help you. Is I don't think you need a long line. I think a, a six foot leash would be fine with that. But what, you keep doing what you're doing. Um, have the people give the dog treats and then when they're done giving the, the treats to the dog call the dog back to you say his name say hey come here come here come here come here then when he comes back to you you give him a bunch of treats so he always realizes that coming back to you is the greatest reward that's really important with puppies any puppy especially a working line dog that they see that the bigger reward is from you if not you're gonna have a dog willy-nilly just keep going up to people up to people and that's from over socializing the dog so um, my only addition to this would be don't let him meet every single person let him see that certain people when he looks at them you're gonna call him back to you and you're gonna give him treats and reward and certain people you're gonna do that and eventually as the dog gets a little bit older have the dog hold it sit wait and then release him to the people so there's a lot of different little games you can do there maybe I'll do a video on that at some point but I think it's a great great question you're doing a great job with your dog super happy to hear this stuff um, rare I hear it but it's really nice to hear it um, the next question is to um, on Shul I have an eight-month-old German Shepherd named Robin. He learns quick but forgets as well. He is super active and never stays steady. Will you please tell me how to make him a little calmer? Just wait till he gets older. That, that's it. Just wait till he gets older. L young dogs are not calm, just like young kids usually aren't calm. So um, I can't help you make them calmer. You don't want to force a dog to be calm. You can't force a dog to be calm anyway. It's, uh, I mean, again, it goes into a little too much compulsion. Got no problem correcting dogs. You've seen me do it. I got no problem giving a leash correction, a pinch collar, prong collar correction, or anything like that. But um, an eight-month-old puppy, you don't want to teach him how to be calm. You want to accept that you got this dog, do engagement training, get the dog to, to focus on good obedience, to be with you, and be happy you got the dog you got, okay? Um, okay, the next question goes out to XRLK or JARLK or something like that. It's X-A-R-R-A-L. Um, I think Goofy likes this question. I have a Malinois. He pulls in the walk a lot. He knows to walk on my side, but only into the house. Outside, he don't give a f uh, F. I can't say it. Not only for the command, but for the treats too. Any advice? He's 14 months old. He's trained from me. Don't worry. I trained him good. He know 11 commands. Well, you didn't train him that good in this walking on a leash thing. So, so I'm, I'm glad you trained him good but you need to focus back on this. So if he's 14 months old and he doesn't care about um, treats or anything like that, then you're gonna need to put some corrections on him. You need to correct the dog that he pays attention to you. Remember, you're not using treats as lures or anything like that. You're using treats as rewards. That means he has to do the behavior, then he gets rewarded. Big difference, okay? Um, there should be corrections on the dog. If he's 14 months old, put a, put a prong collar on the dog, a pinch collar, and give the dog a couple corrections. Make sure that he knows that you're gonna expect this obedience of him. He's 14 months old, you can't now start thinking you're going to keep luring and luring and luring the behavior. At some point you have to give him a correction. It's not easy to do. Sometimes if you really love your dog you're going to think it's too aversive, but it's not. So if the dog doesn't listen to you, then the dog needs to be taught to listen to you and it needs to be very, very fair. It should be a very mild correction with little distractions and then uh, abundant rewards when he does the right thing. But don't lure and continue to lure dogs with treats and bribe them because bribery it doesn't work i mean uh, there's tons of dogs that i see that have all kinds of issues because people continue to bribe 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 their dogs and at some point the dog's like hey screw you or f you like you say um and and they don't they're not going to do it so when you got a hard-headed dog like that you're going to need to give them a correction the correction needs to be fair and it needs to be uh unemotional and and then give the dog a reward after that and the last question goes out to Natalie McKell, who says, I love your videos and have shared your channel with many people, but this is my first question. Good, I'm glad you answered, you're sending me a question. Thank you for sharing the channel. I have a one year, 10 month old Belgian Malinois. And since I rescued her when she was a year old, she had always barked at motorcycles while riding in the car with me. And then it turned into barking at anything that has wheels, but, but not a car or truck, bicycle, wheel, 
chair, etc. Now she barks at basically anything. People walking, riding bikes, motorcycles, uh, trucks with debris piled up on them. What's the best way to stop barking while she's riding in the car? Okay, so if she's only barking when riding in the car, she's just really super excited. Maya does that too. Like if anybody goes by the car, Maya does not like it at all. And this is kind of an easy fix and some people are going to love this answer and some people are going to hate it. And I don't care because I want to give you the right answer that's fair to your dog. If she's a year and 10 months old, she's old enough to understand some corrections. Now, you don't want to give her those corrections because if you keep yelling, quiet, shut up, stop, this and that, you're building into that kind of neurotic behavior. So what I would really suggest you do is get an electronic bark limiter. There's a couple of good ones. Sport Dog makes a good one. Uh, Dogger makes a good one. Garmin makes a good one. There's a bunch of good ones. I'm not endorsed by any of them. I'm not telling you any ones are better, but I use the Sport Dog on the Garmins. I think they're good. Um, and just put it on her and they've all, they're completely automatic settings. So she'll start barking and it'll, it'll bop her a little bit and it'll bop her higher and she'll learn to shut down, shut, shut, uh, shut up. Um, it'll stop the behavior because it's not personal coming from you. It's as a result of her behavior. It's very fair. I don't recommend with a Malinois to use this, like a citronella collar or any kind of, unless you want your car, if your car is older and you want it to smell good, start with a citronella collar. Your car will smell amazingly nice and the dog will still be barking and then go to the electronic bark limiter collar. But you got to get on this, um, get on it right away. It's super easy. The dog will always probably have to wear the, the collar in the car. You may have not have to uh, charge it anymore. Like with Maya, I just put it on. I don't charge it. And by the way, I love Goofy and Maya more than anything. And I use electric bark limiting collars on them when they're in the car. Fair enough. Hope you enjoyed this edition. See you soon. Hey, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.